Hey there, FlossTube. This is Kathy, the hands-on designer. I just wanted to come and do just a quick little introduction before we get into the tutorial for the Let's Talk Stitching pincushion finish, pincushion in a hoop. We actually shot the video a couple weeks ago prior to the release of the chart, Let's Talk Stitching. But I wanted to kind of explain, this is gonna be a little different format than some of my other tutorials. I'm doing this more as a classroom because I actually have two students joining. So my hope is that you'll feel like you actually took a class and learned something. So I might suggest maybe watching it one time through the first time before you actually do the finishing, or at least keep the video handy with all your supplies as you work your way through the process. We had a lot of fun uh, filming it, and, uh, and I really liked the results. We had one experienced stitcher and one not experienced stitcher, and they were both able to complete the project, which makes me very happy. So I hope that this helps you as well. And again, let's talk stitching. Keep calm and cross that stitch. Hey there, Floss Tube. This is Kathy, the hands-on designer. I'm in the studio today wearing the apron, so you know that's tutorial time. And I've got two really fun guests with me today that are with me most days in the studio. Lorna. Hi. And Peyton. Hi. And Peyton is, it's not her official last day, but you do start back to school next week, right? Yep. Okay, so junior year. Yes. All right, we've done all the questions of where she wants to go to college, what she wants to study. Found out about a boyfriend. Um, <laughs> sorry, that always gets a laugh out of her. Um, but anyway, so they are joining me. To, and Lorna, Lorna is here. Um, Lorna does, what did you call yourself? Um, inventory pro procurement. The, okay, she's the shipping department. <laughs> and then Peyton has been with us all summer. This is your third summer, right? Yep. Okay, so you've started, I feel like we've watched you go all through high school. So you have to come back next year sometime too. So. <laughs> um, and you have been putting, what, charts and kits and all kinds of things. Um, and now we did, okay, she's got, she's a little more prepared for this because this is like our third or fourth take. But so what was your favorite project this summer to work on? Um, I don't know, the one behind us, but yeah, there you I go. can't tell you. <laughs> um, it, she's been packing all the kits. She's uh, I can like give her a bolt of fabric and say, cut this, do this, iron that, put it in, and she's just she gets it all together, and it just looks so adorable, and it's just so much help. So thank you so much. Um, but so we thought we would end kind of the summer. I don't, know, I, I don't know. I'm not saying that. We're not ending summer. I'm, no, that's not I'm, it. I'm not ready for pumpkin spice just yet. <laughs> Um, but uh, we're going to do a fun little project today. Uh, we've actually already practiced it once, so you guys want to hold up we already, what we already did. We made our little pin cushions, and we're going to go through them again, and they're going to make another one because they're going to be pros at this now. And this is um, the tutorial to help you finish your Keep Calm and Cross Stitch pin cushion. Um, that is part of the new Let's Talk Stitching pattern, and that... Um, it's going to be coming out this, let's see, next week. Next week? Next week. Next week. Next week. Okay, at Expo, <laughs> at Needlework Expo, it's the virtual wholesale show. Shops are gonna be attending and ordering this pattern. It's a continuation of the Chalk Talk series. So we've talked our way through all four seasons, um, spring, summer, winter, autumn. And I thought before we maybe moved on to holidays, it would be kind of fun to talk about Chalk talk, let's talk about our stitching. Um, so we've got the framed piece, and then of course, we've got this fun bag that has features the small piece, the smaller version of the framed, and then of course, the pin cushion. Now, in the first four charts, I also used a four inch hoop, and um, I called it the hello hoop, and it had said hello and then the season. But for this one, since we're talking all things stitching, I thought it would be more fun to use something that, or make something that is a little, it's fun and it's functional. So what's more fun and functional than a really pretty pin cushion. So today we are going to kind of run it like a class, uh, this tutorial. We've done that before and I thought it, it was a lot of fun to do. So we thought we would do it again. And um, I did not realize until now, okay, I've not done my job because I have not taught Peyton how to cross it. It'll happen, I promise. Um, but you, actually did some stitching for the first time today. So uh, that counts, it counts. Yep. 
Um, but before we turn the camera down and get going, um, do you guys want to hold up as I tell them what they need? Sure. Okay, so these are some supplies that you're going to need. Um, we need a four inch hoop and just use your, um, you just use the ones that you get the craft and hobby stores. Don't use your expensive ones. We're going to be painting them and mucking them up. So, and then of course you'll need your stitching and then um, you'll need some coordinating cotton. What fabrics did you guys pick? You, you changed. The, ooh, I like those. That pretty. That'll be pretty this time around. Okay. She said, what? I'm like, pick some fabrics. I don't know. I'm like, she's very quickly learning how to pick fabrics out. Um, you need, do need some mat board. Um, I use, well, that's foam core. You need that too. And then the round mat board, right? That's a four inch round mat board. Also some wool or some fiber fill. You guys used wool. Uh, that's wool roving. And then we need some lacing thread. Oh, that's right here. Um, and this is just upholstery weight thread I get at the craft and hobby stores. Some sharp needles. They're going to use um, chenille needles, and those work just fine. Or if you have other embroidery needles, I just like the larger eye and a very sharp tip. Um, also, some ribbons and pins to embellish. And you do need a hot glue gun and for two parts of it. And then let's see what else. Oh, just your scissors, some double sided tape. Um, now, in this one, you'll notice that I did paint the hoop. Um, we're not going to do that today. But if you go to my website and there's a blog post, um, it's called Turn Up the Beat because it's a process that I did for that particular chart called Turn Up the Beat, um, where I kind of paint stained the edge of the of the hoop. So you can go there and check it out and, and see how to do it. It's a lot of fun. So you guys ready? Yep. Nope. You sure? Did yeah. you mention batting? Oh, I don't know. Did I mention batting? Maybe not. Batting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lorna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that supply procurement in yes. you, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to stop the camera. And um, sorry, we're it's hard. I'm not used to getting three of us in here. <laughs> but and they're like, okay, come on, Kathy, let's get them on. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay, and we're back. So, all right. First step we need to do in our pin cushion is go ahead and take your four-inch hoop. You guys took the sticker off. I didn't mm -hmm. take my sticker off, but go ahead and separate them. Reason why I take my sticker off is if we are gonna stain it, I don't want it on there. We don't need to see that it was $1.99, probably half off. Okay, and then go ahead and unscrew your hoop, the outer hoop, just a little bit, enough to be able to separate it. And then you can put that part aside. I'm gonna move this. Okay, now first thing we're gonna do is take your piece of um, mat board and get a pen. And we're gonna be creating the part of the pin cushion that goes on the inside. You're not gonna see this, but okay, so go ahead and place this on your mat board and then trace around the inside of it. I got you guys pens, but I didn't get myself one. <laughs> All right, okay, and then take your paper scissors and go ahead and cut right on that line. And it's okay if the edges are a little um, rough, but you just wanna cut right on the line. If, you are, if you're more comfortable doing this with an X-Acto, you can do that. You will not see any of this. And if you're cutting, if you're not sure, like, oh, I can't cut on the line, but I'm cutting outside the line or inside the line, if you're gonna err on any side, cut outside the line, because we can always trim it down a little bit more. All right, as you can see, we've, it's not real pretty on the edge, but that's okay. Nobody's gonna see it. You guys doing okay? You got the garbage can over there? Yes, I do. <laughs> I need my own garbage can right here. All right. Almost there. There. Good deal. Okay. So then we're going to take this piece and fit it into our four inch hoop. Now, if you've got to force it a little bit, that's okay. What you really don't, you could kind of hear, we all kind of went ka thunk with that. Is this on? 
Is this on? Yes. Yeah, it's it, yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to push that foam core all the way to the bottom. So if it's on, it, I would definitely do this on the tabletop. Did you guys push it down? Mm -hmm. So if you turn it over, um, the foam core is not sticking up above the, the, the rim of the hoop. It's just kind of one surface. And yes, it's not real pretty. There's gaps and there's holes and that's okay because nobody's gonna see that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run the hot glue right around the inside, just right where the, um, the foam core meets the, you wanna go ahead and do that? Sure. Um, right where the foam core meets, yeah, do that. Right where the foam core meets the hoop. And this just kind of gives it, a, seals it and helps hold it into place. All right. Okay. All right. Lorna has hers done. We'll trade off to Peyton. Okay. Then, then once you do that, you're just going to go ahead and um, and let that dry. It doesn't take very long. I know it's not often that I use a hot glue gun in projects, but uh, in this, it does definitely help. Yeah. <laughs> and it gets stringy. <laughs> So you said you have used a glue gun before? Yes. Okay, different pro arts and crafts projects. Yes. Okay. Do we want to unplug that for now? Sure. Or I just don't want either of us to get a hot elbow or a wax. <laughs> we'll need it here again in a little bit, but we'll, um, I'll remember to <coughs> turn it on. Okay. So now that um, they're, they've got the glue in there and they're letting it um, dry, we're going to go ahead and you guys remember what we do next is cut a piece of the double-sided tape and we're just going to put it right in the middle here. <laughs> you got wool roping on you. So you excited to go back to school? Not really? No. <laughs> Nobody ever is, I don't think. All right, I'm just gonna cut a little piece. Okay, and then go ahead and take your, um, peel it off. Okay, now can I see yours just real quick? Oh, oh, oh. yep, it's, you're um, not, you wanna stay nice and flush with the, um, with the, the top edge. You were just kind of coming out. Maybe we need to let your hot glue dry just a little bit. I think probably what happened is when you pushed in on that to make it stick, it just yeah. pushed in a little bit. There you go, all right. Okay, so let's actually then before you peel, um, let's do something else so your hot glue has a chance to dry. So now is when, now we're gonna do ours with fabric. So pick which fabric you're going to have for the top of your pincushion. Okay, so we're gonna do fabric since we don't have the, the stitching done at this point, but while they're getting that kind of ready, um, I am gonna say with this, especially if you use the dark, um, the, the chalk, this is the slate, 32 count slate fabrics by Stephanie. If you do use that, you're gonna want to cut a piece of black cotton fabric to kind of use as a lining underneath this so that the lighter batting and uh, fiber fill will not kind of poke through it and uh, and kind of come through as white in, in the weave of the, the linen. So it'll kind of make it a nice dark, um, it'll show dark through there and it'll have a better look. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna place your, you know, as if I had my fabric, you can place your hoop that we're waiting for the, the, um, hot glue to dry a little bit and go ahead and place that on your fabric somewhere and then you want to cut all around it and what did we leave last time we left about an inch and a quarter last yes. time inch and a quarter to an inch and a half um so you just want to cut around it and it's okay if it's not real pretty um because again we will not see it i'm gonna want you like a little more come in a little bit more This would be a fun just craft project just to do with fabric. Um, if you wanted to make, I don't know, do you guys make teacher gifts anymore? Not really, or? Yes, we do. Okay. 
everybody get, all of Hayden's teachers are gonna get a homemade pin cushion this year. <laughs> they would probably like it. Or maybe your mom would. Right, so you guys have your um you know what i guess i should probably okay all right so go ahead and put your fabric to the side and it does not have to be a perfect circle again like i said you're not gonna see this part good thing so now so now like what Peyton's doing is you can go ahead your hot glue is probably fairly dry so go ahead and remove the um paper backing on the double-sided tape and then put that tape side down into your piece of batting. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And then you can go ahead. Um, I'm going to suggest using the scissors. If you, if you feel like your rotary cutting skills are really good, um, by all means do that, but go ahead and cut the, um, the, the batting to match the sides of your, the, the hoop. And again, we're working with the inner hoop. And um, as I suggested to them before, to just maybe leave a scant bit of the uh, batting showing beyond the edge of the hoop. It doesn't have to line up exactly. We don't want too much showing, but a little bit is okay because actually what that does is as we fold all the fabric and everything over, it just kind of softens that edge a little bit. That's why we do that. And while you guys are doing that, I should have been cutting something really quick here just so I can kind of demonstrate a little bit okay all right you don't even have to necessarily when you're for this particular one cut your corners but I don't know I just like to I just think it makes it look a little a little neater okay so pretend that I did my um, batting on there and go ahead and put your fabric right side down your what's going to be your front fabric and then put your batting side down on that actually okay no i'm sorry with this step we don't need that just yet you do need to get your sharp needle this is our favorite part i promise um do you guys want to do it with one strand or two strand this time whatever you i'm say. not going to I, I would like to do this one with two strands, and I promise I did not make it as long as I made it the first time. <laughs> I have a tendency to be a little overly generous with my um, my thread in this step, just because I don't like to constantly start and stop. So I start with a really long thread. Okay, this one's a little shorter than that first one. Okay, so you notice that I cut really long. Okay, I have long arms. So when I go like this and this, you get a long thread. <laughs> um, so I cut the, a really long thread for them. And um, and then they're going to put one end through the, um, one end through the needle. So we're gonna work with a doubled strand. So pull it all the way through the needle until your ends match up and then do that little knot at the end. Um, do the like where you make the loop and then put the um, threads, th the ends, open ends through it. Peyton learned knot tying 101 today, <laughs> and she's doing great at it. All right, I like to knot it a couple times just to have a good size knot. You can clip your ends a little bit. Okay, you're looking like a pro at that now. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have. I jinxed her. <laughs>
It's okay. It's all good. I'm listening to the wind outside. Holy cow, it's a windy day. I think we're supposed to get storms. Yay. We really, we don't need storms. We sure need the rain. Absolutely. Okay, everybody's ready to go. So we've got our doubled upholstery weight thread. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna baste all around. Now I am actually basting on the back side. So my right side is down on the table. And when I baste, I actually just put the needle, um, the needle goes in and out in long stitches like that all the way around the circle. And you guys oh. can go ahead and get started. About a half inch apart. And how far in from the edge, Kathy? I would say about three eighths in from the end, from the edge. You don't want to go too close because you're pulling it pretty tight, but you don't want to rip through the edge of the, the cotton fabric or your linen, because in this case, this would be your linen. Um, but you don't want so in too far in that, you know, we need to be able to cinch it up and around this piece. So you can see, I'm just taking nice big stitches through here. And all the basting is happening on the back side of the cotton. And as I said before, this normally um, would be actually your stitching portion. So remember when I said you would want um, you would want some dark fabric behind this, you would actually, when they were trimming this, um, that would be the linen that they trim. And then what I do then is I take what I what I did is I took this piece that was already trimmed then I laid it on a piece of black cotton and then I cut the black cotton to match the circle and then really you just treat the black cotton and the black linen um, as one so right now I would be basting through both of those layers you can kind of see I'm just I'm not really pulling right now. That's kind of what the stitches look like for right now. Is it easier with a thread not quite so long? Yes. yes. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> I felt so bad I gave him these hugely long threads the first time. You guys coming along okay yeah all right i'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off here and then we'll like come back and like ta-da we're ready for the next step okay and we're back and everybody's basted all the way around hopefully let's see if you can kind of see that a little bit and you can see i don't have like a perfect circle that's okay it's going to end up a perfect circle or as perfect as it could be um okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to pull up on this a little bit Kind of pull up on our gathers and you can kind of pull up a lot and just sort of distribute the gathers around it's okay we can pull up and then let some go because we're going to put some batting in there and then we're going to eventually be filling that in there as well the the lid or the the inner circle that we um filled with foam core So it's just nice to start getting this in shape with a little bit of gathers. You know, and if you can, I mean, your gathers don't have to be 100% even, but it's, you know, just this is a good place to start getting some gathers all the way around. Like you can see, I put in a lot and now I'm sort of loosening it up so we can fit. That's got to fit inside there. Yeah, this, I feel like this is like a little granny hat or something. Or what did you call it before? A or shower bar? cap. A shower cap. <laughs> That's right. Okay. You guys doing okay? Yep. All right, looking good. Yeah, I would start kind of loosening yours up, Peyton. Okay, because we can always tighten it some more. Okay, so then I, um, you can use uh, fiber fill 
or wool roving, what I do is I buy wool roving that comes in one long big ball and, and I know I have some friends who spin and every time I show them that I cut one of those big balls up, it just makes them cringe. But this makes really great stuffing and I love using wool in there. It's just a nice quality product. It's good for your needles and your pins when you use it. Um, you de If you have a wool allergy, for sure you can um, use fiber fill or something like that. Um, I do sometimes have a, a contact allergy to certain types of wools and um, the doorbell's ringing, of course. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Okay, and we're back. Sorry, I had to go upstairs and answer the door. Um, so what they've been doing in the meantime is shredding their wool and you just kind of pull it apart. And we talked about this a little bit. I was telling Peyton, um, Lorna, you've done this before, but uh, sometimes it doesn't always make sense, but when you're working with either wool or fiber fill, you really need to pull it apart to put the loft in, and then you're just gonna cram it all back together, but it's definitely a step that you should do. It looks like you got a little sheep going there. Um, <laughs> um, this is just, I really like working with the, with the wool roving. Like I said, um, it's just, it's got a nice feel to it. Sometimes I do have an issue with wool. So this is a Corydale wool. Um, it's, I have found that it's the Merino wool that I actually have a hard time with. So don't seem to have a problem with the Corydale. I can touch it just fine. So I better pull a little bit more apart here create that loft that we want. It also pulls apart if there's any lumps or bumps in there. It just kind of gets rid of those. Nothing's worse than a lumpy pincushion. All right. You got enough? I will say we all kind of just did one. I really liked the amount that I had in this. That's got a nice dome to it. And then we all kind of made our first ones and um, we felt like they were quite didn't quite have the dome to them so we all said we were going to try and put more in this time so here's the trick this is probably about the trickiest part of the whole thing all right kind of pull your needle and thread over there and by the way your needle and thread is still attached you have not um cut it or anything like that so we take all this get a little more kind of and just sort of work it back into a little ball and you want to make sure that the whole like you're kind of covering the whole, um, don't, you know, definitely fluffing it up in the middle, but you're covering the whole circle. And then this has to fit back inside your little shower cap. That is forever going to be called the shower cap. And here's where you can kind of play with it to make sure like on mine, I felt like I got a lot of my wool over here and I was a little lacking wool right there. So this is the point right now where you'll wanna kind of, you can pull on this to kind of cinch it up, take a look at your front, see if you've got your wool nice and evenly distributed in there. Oh yeah, this is definitely better um, a better amount of wool. A little more wool. Unless you could just kind of, this is the most fit, this is really actually the most fidgety part of the whole thing. And then when you kind of have it distributed the way you like, you can see I turned it back and I'm using the tabletop um, to help hold all this into place and my fingers are in the bottom. Now, I will do want to point out, this is the concave part of the, that, where we put the, uh, the foam core into the, the round inside. Um, so you actually, there's like a lip right there. We want to make sure that's on this back side. And then once you have it kind of distributed where you want it, a little fiddly. See, when we put more wool in, it's a little harder to move, isn't it? They're being very quiet. <laughs> They're concentrating. <laughs> Okay, so when you kind of have it where you want it, go ahead and cinch that tight. And before I knot it off right here, like I said, I actually look one more time. And this would be the time when you can sort of go, yep, I want a little more here, move it around a little bit. Also, if you are working with your stitched piece, you want to make sure that you're nice and centered.
Okay, and then I'm actually going to, while well, they're still kind of working, I want to, I'm gonna kind of put my, I call it my safety knot. I'm gonna put a knot right here. So I'm gonna take my needle through the fabric, make a loop, and then needle through the loop. And this way it stays fairly tight, but I don't have to keep holding it and I don't have to keep wrestling it. And at this point too, you could kind of even go, um, take a look at the front and see if it's uh, filled as, as filled as you want it to be and also nice and even. Right. Uh oh, yours broke. Okay, all right, that's all right. Let's see, what do we got going? That happens sometimes. So what I'm gonna do is this. Actually, okay, unfortunately at this point, we need to kind of just re redo this a little bit, but... We're just going to put, I'm not going to like take out all your old stitches or anything like that. Okay. I'm just going to do a little band-aid, shall we say. Um, it's actually kind of good when stuff like this happens in a class. Because trust me, stuff like this happens in a live class all the time. <laughs> I have too much roving. That's okay. That, those are all the kind of judgment calls you need to make. There's no magic number like where I can say, oh yeah, put in like three ounces or whatever. Um, okay, Peyton, I'm gonna do this really quick. And what you can see what I'm doing is I quickly um, threaded up her needle and, cause her thread broke and it can happen. She's, that meant she was pulling nice and firm, which that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I really don't want to lose out on all the work that she's done here. So I am just quickly going right over her basting lines. Sorry, I shouldn't be doing this for you, but I thought, well. I figured you were okay with it. <laughs> okay. All right, mine broke too. Man, so, I was telling them to pull tight. I, they took me at my word. It, well, I don't know if it broke or if my knot is pulling through. Oh, okay, that could well be. Then you, then if it's uh, the knot, then you need to make a bigger knot next time. Or um, when you start, you know, uh, run the knot, you know, through the fabric and then go back through that and put another stitch on it. So should I redo this? Can you kind of see what I'm doing? I just got a new thread and I'm just going back around. This is probably quicker than redoing all that. So I'm retying my knot. Too. Okay. But did your thread actually break? No, I okay. think the knot just pulled through. Gotcha, okay. I'm almost there, Peyton. Okay. This is like finishing 911. Help! All right, so all I did was again, um, I just went back over her previous stitches just to save them because her, her, her um, thread broke. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the front. Are you happy with that? That's like got a little more poof to it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to, again, it's that anchor knot. I'm going to run through here. I'm going to do it before I hand it to you, just because if I handed it to you, it would all go. No, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I made that anchor knot. And now, what, there you go. Okay, so now what they're gonna do is they're going to take their needle. Actually, that's my needle on there. <laughs> so she's going to, do you have your needle? Oh, yeah. I'll just take it. Okay. This is what happens when you do a, it's not a live class, but you know, it's good that these things happen. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what next. You notice I made that, what I call that safety knot right there, and I did not cut my thread. Now what I'm gonna do is we want to, see all those little um, dents and divots all the way around? What we wanna do is start lacing across 
to kind of pull all of this in tighter. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna stitch across, and I'm gonna pull. Then what I want to do is I'm just gonna keep bringing my thread across, but at an angle. So I'm gonna keep running my stitches. So we end up looking like a spider web on the back. So they just kind of keep working back and forth and back and forth. And every time I pull, then that gets rid of those little um, divots and points on the front. And I'm gonna run out of thread. So I'm coming across this way. Are you gonna run out of thread, Peyton? Or you got a little bit to go? Yeah. Okay, so you can see see the beginnings of that uh, spider web on the back. We don't want to stitch, okay, like a lot of times, like what I, I show, oops, <laughs> when I'm lacing the back of something square, like we'll do side to side like this and then side to side. We don't want to do that. We want to just keep turning and going all the way around. That's the best way to get rid of those um, puckers on the sides. I'm gonna do one more and I think I'm gonna to have to get a new thread. All right, yep, I'm running out of thread. So I'm gonna run my needle through the cotton, make a loop and put my needle through the loop. I'm gonna do that twice, at least twice. A lot of pressure on that knot. Okay, so, so far you can see where I've actually laced and how it makes the front start looking a whole lot tidier. I'm gonna get some more thread. Guys doing okay? Yeah. Okay. You doing okay? Do you need an extra hand? I don't know what I need. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. Now some of that will start um, I know you're trying to hold it all up there, but once you start lacing it, it'll start um, pulling all together too. That'll help bring it all together. Okay, let's start lacing and see what happens. Okay, can I make a suggestion? Let's see, let's I'm go looking. ahead and, um, no, you're fine. <laughs> pull really tight. I'm gonna hold here, you pull tight. I'm gonna give you an extra hand. Ah, see that, so we did that again. Okay, that's yeah. okay. Um, it pulled through the edge of the of the, um, yeah, the fabric. Sure. Okay. Yep. So just baste real quick right back through it. That's why we want to be at least probably about a half, three eighths to a half inch from the edge of the fabric. I'm just gonna I'm gonna help hold you in place there. You know what? Oh, I know you need to move it. Sorry. Let me know which way you need to move it. That's all right. Because we don't, if we pull so tight, you don't want to pull through the edge of the fabric. You're good. All right, you're almost there. One more. Okay, so now what I want you to do is pull. Okay, that's all right, you're good. Oh, man. Okay, gonna do it again. Yep. Can I see real quick? I wanna see why that's happening. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, it's your knot. Okay. It's my knot again. Your knot needs to be a little bit bigger. That's okay. okay. I'm gonna go and go beyond that here for you. Just so make sure, yeah, I'm not over that sometimes like three and four times. 
You want a nice big knot because you're pulling on it pretty tight. And um, okay, so I'm gonna try and get you beyond that point. What okay. I did is I went, I kind of laced a little bit beyond your knot. Okay. Now I'm gonna put that anchor knot in. So you okay. can get to the next steps. Just, I think that's gonna, that would solve your problems is just a slightly bigger knot. Okay. All right. You're not actually ripping through the edges of your fabric. It's just you're not. The knot. You were pulling, you were pulling nice and tight, which is what you wanna do. Okay, so. That's really lovely. That's okay. A lumpy pincushion is a loved pincushion. <laughs> so sure, need Kathy. to put that on a cross stitch shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay, so now from here, you want to start pulling across. I'm going to make a suggestion since we're real close here. Is maybe go here first. Okay. Then pull across this way. Okay. Then to here, then to here, then to here, then to here. And just start, okay. remember, work your way around that way. Sorry, got a glue, glue stick. Doing okay over there, Peyton? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, it looks really good. Yeah. Or might you just not want another string? Okay. So now I should go here. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. You just you constantly want to work across from. Just keep taking it back and forth across, working your way around um, around the circle. Opposite side to opposite side. And the idea here is that you're basically just trying to get rid of those creases and pleats and puckers on the edge. And sometimes I find if I Put my needle right through the middle of the pleat or the pucker that's where it it helps the most and, and then you and then it smooths all that out i always think when i say that oh boy would that be nice if somebody could do that to me Payton not Payton does not have to worry about that no she does not <laughs> Another okay, go ahead and knot that. Remember, you put your needle through it, create the loop, and knot, like, say, tw at least twice. Now I'm just working back and forth. Hopefully, this is uh, allowing you time to sort of finish along with us as you're watching the video or stitching. This is a little different than my usual videos, which you have to look up a whole lot more for. But I like doing this format. It's, it's kind of like having a class, an in-person class. And then once you kind of work your way around, you can sort of see the, what I end up looking like on the back, kind of the spider web that you end up getting. But then you can look on the front and then, oh, I've gotten some nice edges there. And then this will be going into an embroidery hoop. So, whoops, just popped out of my hand. So like I've got a little, I can tell like I've got a little bit of um, uh, wool stuck in there. So I've got a little, a little bulge there. So that'll just go right inside the hoop and you won't be able to see that. And I'm going to run my needle through the fabric, leave a loop so I can put my needle through it to make a knot and tighten it. And I'm going to do it at least, like I said, at least twice. And I can cut that Okay, I need some more thread. All right. There, I'll let you determine how long you need. So there's my... Bounce, bouncing out of my fingers. Okay. All right. Any more? I need to, you, you need more thread or... Actually, I think you look really good. Okay. 
You've got all, and you can tell that because you've got all, there's really no open vacant spots where like, oh yeah, you could get another thread there. No, I think you're actually really good. Okay. And all your edges look good, see? I like that fabric, that's gonna be really sharp. Yeah. You're a gray girl like me. <laughs> yeah. I like my grays, I like my pinks, but you know. Okay, can I keep talking while you're finishing mm -hmm. that? Because um, mm -hmm. I want to tell them what they need to do next is actually the very same step. Um, but this time we're going to do the same basting kind of thing, but with your round that's going to go on the bottom. That's what that looks like right there. And this is just a four inch round mat. So you're going to pick your, your next fabric and um, you're going to, I like that one. That's really sharp. So you'll cut another piece of fabric. And this time now, remember I said the first one would have been your linen. This one really will be a pretty coordinating cotton. So go ahead and cut that out. And the reason why I'm gonna move along on this is because we can get you going and then I'll turn the camera off while we kind of get all caught up. But you know what we need to do. There's just one big difference on this one. I'll explain that in a moment after I cut my fabric out. And you can see I am not being real specific, lining up. I am just really kind of eyeballing that, that cut. You can be a little closer on this one, um, especially when you're cutting your circle on the first one and it's your linen. Don't cut it too close to the circle. Like I said, I would give yourself at least maybe an inch and a quarter beyond the, the hoop. Now with this one, we'll get um, we'll get laced up again with um, some thread, one or two ply. Um, I think we did the last one. Did we do it? We did one ply one. last time. So um, you'll do the same thing. You're going to baste all the way around. But um, last time we basted on the back side of the fabric. This time I'm going to keep the circle in the middle, and then we're going to just fold the fabric edge up over top, and I'm going to be basting on the right side of the fabric all the way around. And so we're basically gonna baste with this in place. We did not do that the first time around. So that's the biggest, that's the biggest difference, okay? So we're gonna get going on that. I'm gonna turn the camera off and we'll be right back. Okay, and we are back again. We've just been lacing away. So let's see, so at this point, we've got our, our fronts nice and unfilled. How, how'd you come out with okay. yours? They look good. A little puckery, but it'll it'll smooth out. Yeah, it will once it goes in the in the outer hoop. But so that's kind of what our okay. Everybody, show your backside, your pincushion backside. <laughs> no funny ideas. <laughs> um, okay, so that's kind of you know not necessarily real pretty, but that's what it looks like because nobody's gonna say that. So so what we did is we uh, first lace. This would be the side with the needlework. Then we took that round. Um, piece of mat board and we laced it onto that no batting or anything in there and that's kind of what the back of that looks like again nobody's gonna see the inside so I made a couple quick knots I'm gonna make one more and then cut off and you guys are all good to go on that so now I'm gonna like a garbage can in the middle I'm gonna use my pin cushion Park my needle. Okay, so now we're basically ready to assemble, except I'm gonna use that one because I need to assemble this one. <laughs> um, so I've got my hot glue gun um, warming up again, and we are ready to uh, fit the outer ring onto this, uh, the, the stuffed round. You probably need to undo your hoop just a little bit more, but don't do it, uh, undo it so much that the, the screw comes out. Do it just so you can put it over top. All right. And then once it's in there, go ahead and tighten it up again. Tighten it as much as you can. If you have a directional fabric, oh, yes. make sure that your screw top is um, yes. at the top. Yeah, this is the one that Peyton did last time. And um, so see how her words go that way and her... Um, the hoop screw is at the top. 
Okay, and I would say tighten it until you can't tighten it anymore, which the more you fill this too, you'll probably notice that you don't get it as, as to have to screw it as tight as you did last time or screw it as much. Okay. So when I was kind of working on this finish, um, I thought, well, that's the backside. And well, I mean, it makes a pretty pin cushion, but what happens if somebody picks this up and we don't want to see that. So that's kind of where I came up with the idea to do um, the covered round. And this happens to be four inch. This is a four inch hoop. So it would fit in there. Well, then I had kind of this happy little accident because when I was making a couple of the prototypes, okay, I thought, okay, well, this, if I put this on there, it'll have, it'll sit really nicely. And so I actually put it on top of the counter and I went like this and I'm, I just, I don't know, I thought I pushed it down and then the whole outer hoop actually went down a little bit because what happened is this four inch hoop kind of tucked inside and I actually really liked that. So it does give you a little bit of a ridge here, which is okay. But then when it lays, um, when it's sitting on your tabletop, this back pretty portion, it kind of lies just uh, just right on the same level as the back of your hoop. So I would just give it that extra little push down. And um, I did the same thing for this one. You can kind of see the a little bit of a ridge on the edge. That's also another reason why I had you cover that uh, it with batting, just to make the edges nice and smooth. Okay. All right, so then what we want to do, we are in the final steps here. Do you want to go ahead and start? Um, we just do a little bit of hot glue in through here. And then if you want to put a little, now if you want it to be weighted a little, um, just a little bit, these actually are, are pretty decent size weight and they're fairly pretty solid, so it's not going anywhere. Um, oh, we got that, okay. Uh, but if you want a little more weight to it to sit on top of your table, there is a little bit of extra room in here. So if you want to put like say a little bag of like BBs or some kind of weight in there, um, that's a good place to do it and put that in there before you close it up with your, um, with your backside. And so you just want to cover that with some hot glue. You could do other, you know, tacky glue or whatever, but I just like the hot glue for this project because it dries pretty quickly. Um, so put it all over there, put it inside. And then just to kind of make sure it all mushes together, once you put your backside on, and I just put it right down on the table and I held it into place until the glue dried, like Lauren was doing. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And Peyton's got hers going. And same thing, all right. Yeah, I do have to pucker though. That's okay. You know what, you can actually probably, let me see. Oh, a little one. Um, that one actually probably came about when maybe you were tightening the outer ring. ring. Um, so if you really wanted to get to move that a little bit, you could take the tip of a needle and just kind of just the work fabric. It. Yeah, just work the fabric a little bit, and I bet it'll disappear. Okay. All right. And then because you know, I just what what's a, a fun little finish without some sort of embellishment? I just put a little bit of uh, gray and white gingham ribbon on the top of mine, and um, we did on the last ones too. What color ribbon are you gonna put on, Lorna? I don't know. Do I have to get the, the box of ribbons back? <laughs> I have a lot of ribbons. So. I know you do. <laughs> um, do you have any greens? Oh, I bet I do. Yep. So we'll look. Okay. And then Peyton, you're making this one. Can we say it's for your mom? I'm not giving yes. away like any big secret. <laughs> okay. I don't think your mom watches my last tube. <laughs> Although she should. Let's have a talk with her. Okay. <laughs> And I think that'll look really pretty on there. So yeah. we were kind of saying in one of the off times, this would be a fun project just, you know, for for even just not um, uh, finishing with cross stitch. So, all right, should we go ahead and turn the camera up and then just say our, our goodbyes and... <laughs> okay, all right, I need to get a better little ow, remote thing. That was my wrist, that's okay. All right, so um, hope you enjoyed our little class. And um, I think did you guys... Well, I know, I know Peyton learned something new. She learned oh, I did how too. to do basting and doing taking some her some first stitches. A little different method of basting uh, with the lacing with the spider web effect rather than going just back and forth like on a square or rectangle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, any, any other hints or suggestions? Take your time. Take your time. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
<laughs> okay, well, thanks for um, joining us for class. We hope you like this format, just something a little bit different. And um, so now we probably got to get packing orders for the afternoon, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and thanks for another wonderful summer. We really yeah, appreciate we're it. We're going to miss you. And, yeah. um, glad that you're going to be able to help out maybe just a little bit every once in a while when you That's got some free sure. time. She's a very avid sportswoman, so she's, she's involved in a lot of activities. So. Yes. Um, anyway, well, hope you enjoyed the tutorial and enjoy the stitch and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.